Today, themes of horror. Yep. Yep. The fly, the thing, the fog, carry, psycho, poltergeist free, the exorcist, the tubular bells one, hellraiser, Halloween, the Amityville horror, Friday the 13th, Vertigo, Silence of the Lambs, and Rosemary's Baby. Can't say I recognise that one, but um, yeah, it is literally themes from horror films, uh, believe it or not. So, <laughs> no idea again why I grabbed this. I assume it must have been super cheap somewhere. There's the uh, the booklet. Very simple. Shall I read it to you? Horror has been one of the most successful areas of the movies for as long as film has existed. And in these films, almost more so than any other kind, the music has been hugely important. Yeah, I guess. The best horror films wind up the tension by suggestion and surprise, and music is essential to achieve both. Themes of Horror illustrates this perfectly, and features some of the greatest horror movie themes of all time. The shower scene from Psycho has gone into folklore, but who ever thinks of the curtain whipping back without also hearing the dashing violins which accompany it? That was around 35 years ago. But even in the early 90s, the music from the Science of the Lambs was chillingly setting the scene for the horrors to come. This is a hugely enjoyable collection full of strong melodies and emotional charging... Emotional charging arrangements? Emotionally charged arrangements would be better, maybe? However, beware of playing this collection at night while in on your own, unless you want to end up checking under the bed before you get in it. And wasn't that a face at the window? Ooh. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> yeah, so it's just a load of um, movie horror themes. It's a fun little CD. I don't even remember where I got it, but themes of horror. Why not? Apologies if the audio was a bit weird on those last two. Hopefully it should be fixed with this one. I realised the current setup I've got, I needed to work out a different solution for the microphone. Um, next up... <laughs> It's Crazy Frog. This is actually my brother's CD. And I have, I think I must have just nicked it at some point, but <laughs> wow, it includes crazy features. The Axel F video, popcorn video, one crazy game, screensaver, wallpaper, and photos. Oh my lord. Man, Crazy Frog, it was, it was always just, it was the quintessential mobile phone ringtone, right? The Axel F theme, but uh, this is more than just that. This has a fantastic track list of Axel F, Popcorn, Woomp, 1001 Nights, Bailando, Don't You Want Me, Dirty Frog, Magic Melody, Pump Up the Jam, In the 80s, Pinocchio, Wonderland, Dallas, The Pink pa oh no. Look up The Pink Panther theme, I've just remembered what it sounds like. It's awful! <laughs> Crazy sounds, a cappella, and then the videos and stuff. But oh my days, crazy frog man! Product of his time, right? I don't think it really um, exists nowadays. It's literally the album is just images of crazy frog. I don't even know. I don't really know what to say about crazy frog. To be honest, if you haven't heard of crazy frog. Then watch the Axel F video, it's like an iconic early to mid-2000s thing. When did this even come out? Does it say? 2005, yeah. Men just crazy frog, man. What a, what a mental thing to just happen. <laughs> Creator, this is a classic fresh band, another one of them. Uh, this is Pleasure to Kill and... Uh, Choir of the Damned, Ripping Corpse, Death of Your Saviour, Pleasure to Kill, Riot of Violence, The Pestilence, Carrion, Comma Command of the Blade, and Under the Guillotine. Very happy sounding names for these guys. And a, well, I mean, not a particularly happy looking cover, really. <laughs> it's classic for Ash, though. Uh, the song Pleasure to Kill is the only one I really remember off of this. It's another broken CD, man. Why? Um, I haven't actually listened to much Creator. I listened to a little bit of their more modern stuff, but this album I haven't listened to maybe as much as I should. 
Uh, this looks like it's got some... Okay, it's mostly just your standard lyrics and stuff going on inside. Um, very plain, not a huge amount of imagery or anything like that. And then there's a short little like paragraph from them. I'm assuming because obviously this must be a re like reissued one, not the original CD. Uh, that that booklet has been updated as well. But yeah, create a classic thrash band. Give the title track a listen, Pleasure to Kill. I don't... I, like I said, I haven't listened to the album enough to tell you any more, really. It's just one of those that I picked up because I'd heard the band was like such a big name and I've never had the time to properly listen to it. Um, yeah, create a Pleasure to Kill. Well, this is a bit of a weird one. Um, this is the Spirit Box album sleeve. <laughs> I don't know where the actual CD bit itself has gone, but Spirit Box are an absolutely fantastic band. Um, some of the members from I Wrestled a Bear once then went and made their own thing. And Spirit Box are great. Like, if you haven't heard them, what song would I recommend? Personally, one of my favourite Spirit Box songs is either... I would say Secret Garden is right up there. But this whole album is absolute bangers. Uh, Secret Garden, Sun Killer, Circle With Me, Constance is like one of the most... You don't... <sighs> Watch the music video. Um, and it's... Yeah, it's a lot more emotional than you would imagine, judging by, like, I mean, it's a lot more, like, feels rather than anger, which a lot of their other music is very anger-filled and whatever. Constance has a completely different vibe to it. I would say it's well worth giving that a listen because it's just fantastic. And w watch the video as well. It's such a nice, such a lovely just piece of media all around, to be honest. Um, yeah, Spirit Box, this is the Eternal Blue album. I've, I've listened to a little bit of their EP that they came out with not too long ago. Quite enjoyed it. I'm hoping we're going to get another another full, full long album some point in the next year. You got this, guys. Courtney, Mike, oh, what are the other's names? I can't remember the other two. I can't remember the drummer and the bassist name. Oh, no, my brain. Oh, anyway. Spirit Box, The Sound of Blue. It's one of my albums of last year it came out, I think, 2021? Was it last year? All of this is melding together for me. 2021, yeah. One of my albums of last year. Some metalcore. Uh, this is Killswitch Engage's Incarnate, I think it's called? Yeah, Incarnate. Uh, this is the album that has Hate by Design on it which has got a really catchy chorus and quite a fun guitar riff to play. Um, what else? But and Alone I Stand as well, I recognise, but I haven't listened, like, of the Killswitch albums, this is probably one of the ones I've listened to the least. Which is always awkward, because I don't really know much on the track listing. It's a really, really cool actual CD. Really nice artwork. I love the, I love the colours actually on this art. Like, look at it. It's just so nice. It's so nice. Uh, yeah, I. It's Kill Switch. It's metalcore. Uh, obviously, this is not with Howard. It's with the. the oh, I can't remember what the new vocalist is called. I'm sure Kill Switch fans know him, and. Yeah, I again not my most listened to Killswitch album. I think it, my most listened to is probably most people's most listened to as well. And it's it's an alright album. I haven't given it enough of a listen to give you a proper review again. But Hate by Design, if you're just going to listen to one track off the album, that's the one that sort of stuck with me when I had listened to it. This is an album. This is a great album. Look at it. Beautiful. Mastodon. Blood Mountain? Blood Mountain. Good. I'm glad I remembered that. I just, you may have been able to tell I was buying for time because I couldn't actually think what it was called. Uh, yeah, Mastodon's Blood Mountain. 2000 and... 
six. Yeah, I was going to say two thousand seven. Um, it's got some absolute bangers and some very unusual tracks as well. Uh, this is the album that has what's it called? Where's it gone? Uh, da, 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 da. The Wolf is Loose is the opening track. It also has a uh, Blade Catcher, which has some very unusual vocals. Um, it's a unique sounding song, I'll say that much. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what else I can say about that. Um, what else have we got here? Sleeping Giant, Crystal Skull, Colony of Birchman, like Macedon. I saw them live. I wasn't that hugely like captivated by the performance, um, but their actual music on records I really like, and I really like all of like art style wise stuff what they do. And um, what have we got here? We've got lyrics inside, like actual lyrics with really cool art going on. Again, like I said, their art style of stuff is so nice. I'm not sure about that one, actually. <laughs> oh, my day is going on the back here. Look at that. Yeah, no, Mastodon are so... Such a cool band. Such a cool band. You're out there, dog. Um, yeah, so I, if you were just looking for like a song to listen to off of this, I'd probably say The Wolf Is Loose, which is the first track. Crystal Skull as well, it's fantastic. Um, there's actually, I mean, listen to the full album all the way through would be my recommendation. It's my recommendation for most albums, if you can. Just sit down and spend 45 minutes, either like in the car. That's what, I'm, that's what I always used to do. Uh, my now wife went to university about an hour away. And when I went to visit her, I would basically put an album on, and by the time I got there, the album finished. So I'd get to listen to like a full album front to back, and it's definitely my favourite way to listen to music if you can. And uh, yeah, I would suggest give it a go, man. Give it a go. What do we got next? What do we got next? Oh, we've got Pantera, Far Beyond Driven, I think it is. Yeah, Far Beyond Driven. So this is the album with Five Minutes Alone, Becoming, I'm Broken. Uh, probably the tracks that people know. Maybe Shedding Skin and Planet Caravan as well. Fairly well-known Pantera songs. Uh, Five Minutes Alone has obviously got... Great riff. I'm Broken as well with the little slide. What are you doing, birds? Is that a great track? You alright over there? You're sitting in the middle of the... You alright? Alright then. <laughs> My parents' dog, she's not... She doesn't come around here very often and she's a bit wondering where they've gone. So if you can see her in the back for these videos, don't worry, we've got food, she's got her bed, it's right down here behind me. She just wants them to come back. <laughs> She's just not used to being here. Um, but anyway, oh, folds out. We've got a fold out thing. Alright, we've got like, full large art there. So they've got lyrics, but they're all sort of all over the place because you have to. Oh no, what have I done? You have to unfold it to get to them. Um, so, Far Beyond Driven, it's, it's, it's got to be I'm Broken and Five Minutes Alone really off of it, I think. They are the two standouts. Uh, Planet Caravan's great as well, but yeah, they're the tracks I'd say to listen to if you can. Three quid from CEX, bargain. Classic album, right? Kaiser Chiefs, yours truly, Angry Mob. Not CEX this time, Oxfam. Support them charities, boys. Um, Ruby is the first track of the album. That is again mid two thousands, like when I was at school. That was just huge, massive, massive song. Uh, what else is on here? Love's not a competition as well. Everything is average nowadays. Like there's some really nice tracks on this. 
It's yellow. It's Kaiser Chiefs. It's that British. I assume they're British, right? They must be British. They sound British. I might be completely wrong. Okay, no, they've got something, something in Camden, so I think we're okay. I think they are British. Uh, but it's like British indie kind of guitar-y, jazz, and I haven't listened to the full album, if I'm being honest again. Maybe I shouldn't be being honest because it's showing I've got these CDs and I've not had a chance to listen to them all. But the, the standout tracks were kind of the singles, really. Um, which is Ruby, The Angry Mob, That Was No Competition, and Everything Is Average Nowadays. And uh, yeah, Kaiser Chiefs, yours truly, Angry Mob. Next up... Protest the Hero, Kezia. Now again, not my most listened to album, Fortresses by Protest the Hero by far, by far my favourite. However, this has got some tracks like, uh, what's it called, where's it gone? Bury the Hatchet, and Heretics and Killers, that's the one. They're the two that stand out, like, in my memory from this but again it's one of those albums that you're meant to listen to the whole way through you see even on the back it's split into like sections you got like section one two three so and then four is just like sort of the end it's again it's progressive you're meant to listen to the whole thing the whole way through the cd is just loose because those little <laughs> it's one of those annoying things right in cds those little plastic bits they always just bend in and break but there's nothing you can do about it. They just they just do, and once they're broken, there's no way to fix them. <laughs> right, let's put the CD back in there before it disappears. Oh, they look pretty young here. Look at that. It's one of the, one of their earlier albums. I don't think it was quite their first, but it's definitely definitely early in their career. It's 2005, yeah. So. Really cool artwork with all this sort of melting flowers and or falling apart flowers and stuff like that. I'm not sure. Wait, what? It's an on switch, but it's on both ways. I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I need to give this album a full listen through, actually. It's been ages and ages since I did. Um, Fortress I did not that long ago, but Kezia. I need to, need to do it fairly soon. Right, we're going to do two albums here that I, I'm going to be honest, I haven't had a chance to listen to. Manguard? I don't have a clue. I, I don't have a clue what this is. Um, again, I must have got it cheap and I've just not listened to it. Or if I did, I listened to it when I was much younger. I don't remember anything about it at all. None of these tracks recognise, like... I, I don't recognise them at all. And then it's a Pearl Jam album as well. Now I've listened to a bit of Pearl Jam, but not this album. Again, this was from a uh, from a record shop quite a lot of years ago, and um, yeah, I just don't remember. What even is this album called? Is this just called Pearl Jam? It doesn't have like a title anywhere, and it's just got an avocado on it. I don't like what. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Um, I don't... Like I said, I, both of these albums, I don't have a thing to say about in terms of the actual tracks on them. Pearl Jam, the band, obviously, they've got other great albums and songs, which I'm pretty sure I should have one of somewhere in this collection, so when we get to that, we'll cover them in that more detail. But Manguard, I have no idea what this band is, or does, or sounds like. Like... I, I don't know where that CD's come from. The, I, let's have a quick look and see if I can work it out. Hang on. So there's a little mail order thing. Plastic head. It's the record label. Oh, it is very gloomy. Oh my gosh, look at him. Look at him. What else is happening? 
It's, it's just look how gloomy it is. It looks like it's outside here in England. Like what? <laughs> what is going on? I have no idea what this band is. Their names seem very Scandinavian. Norway. Norway. Okay. Not quite. Not quite England. But I, d I don't know what Mangard are as a band. I'll have to give it a listen now that I've like. <laughs> Discovered it again because I don't I don't even know what type of like it's metal of some sort I mean just judging by the fact well Norway, but also That logo so I don't know I'll have to give them a listen and who knows what they are right who knows uh, What do we got here? Ah One of Mastodon's worst albums to be honest, um, what's this one called again? Once More Round the Sun. That's actually the, that was the album title? I knew it was a song on here. Although I say it's one of their worst albums. There's a couple of the tracks on here I don't mind, I haven't listened to. It's a, it's a lot lighter and it's not quite got the same vibe. I think The Hunters probably I don't like as much. Um, but The Motherload, High Road and Once More Around the Sun, all three of those tracks, they're back to back to back to back to back to back on the album. And I would say they're all worth a listen. Pretty cool artwork on there. Again, like I said, massive and artwork is mental. Like, what is that? <laughs> it's crazy. It's so cool. Oh, and there's a, there's a huge version of... Oh my days, what is going on? Hopefully you can see all that and it's in focus. What is going on there? On the back here we've got lyrics. But yeah, Macedon. Like like I said, they're they're a great band, but you, you want to listen to their albums all the way through. Uh, I do need to listen to this one a little bit more, because I remember those those three tracks, but outside of that, none of these others really ring a bell at all. Aunt Lisa, no. Chimes at Midnight, maybe? <laughs> but, I don't know, I'll, I'll probably listen to it and be like, oh, it's that song! I recognise that, but of course I've been listening to it like in the car, like I was saying the other day, that's what I always used to do. So I wouldn't actually know the song titles, I'd just know the music. <laughs> Which doesn't really help when it comes to looking at the albums like this, when I need to try to remember in my brain what they're actually called. Um, but, yeah, that's another Mastin album, once more, Round the Sun. <laughs> Another mid 2000s classic, Kings of Leon, Only by the Night, right? I mean, again, I don't necessarily know the whole album, but there's two tracks in particular off of this that went absolutely massive in the UK, again, while I was at school. Uh, Sex on Fire and Use Somebody are the two I'm talking about. They're just huge. They were everywhere. They were absolutely everywhere. Again, I'm pretty sure this CD is my brother's. I seem to have inherited all of his CDs. I'm not sure quite how I've managed it, but I have. Yeah! You're sitting down there! You're comfortable! Yeah, you are! <laughs> okay. She's, she's still not happy about being here, my parents' dog. It's fine. It's fine, I'll give her a treat in a minute, it will be good. Oh dear. What happened to them? So, anyway, uh, Kings of Leon. I'm sure you would recognise uh, Use Somebody and Sex on Fire. They're so well known as albums. Or uh, as albums? As tracks? Um, like I said though, outside of that, I don't remember a huge amount. I'm pretty sure this is my brother's CD that I've ended up with yet again. <laughs> it's fine. Um, so I may have to give it back to him at some point, but yeah, Kings of Leon, only by the night. Oh! A more modern Machine Head album. So this one was Bloodstone and Diamonds. And this is, yeah, this, this one I'm pretty sure I got when it came out, or very soon after. Uh, and again, this was a CD that I bought and listened to on the journey to and from seeing my my partner. And um, tracks on here 
Uh, Knight of the Long Knives, is that what it's called? Knight of Long Knives, Sail into the Black. Both of those are massive. Uh, Killers and Kings as well. Um, Machine Head, they're a band that I really, really like one album for, but the rest of them I sort of like a few tracks off of them, but I've not not really been inspired to listen to the entire thing. Um, we'll get to that album at some point, that I'm sure of, but we haven't found it quite yet. This one's kind of cool. They went with like very medieval style artwork by the looks of it inside like tapestries and stuff like that. But yeah, it's really cool. Um, nice looking lyric book, actually. I like the artwork. Oh, we've got Illuminati, of course. But the rest of the album, I just don't... I don't know it, is the problem. Like those, uh, Knife Long Knives, uh, Sail Into the Black, and what was that last... What was the last track? Oh, you see, this is what I mean. I don't know it well enough. Um, Killers and Kings is the other one. But, hello! What are you doing? Come here then. Come on then. Yeah. They're not going to be able to see you, unfortunately. You're hidden down there. I'll give you a head and itch, though. There you go. So anyway, Machine Head, Bloodstone and Diamonds. You are being very good, aren't you? I don't know if you'll be able to see Parents Doggo here. She likes attention, and if you stop giving her attention, she will look at you and nudge you until you give her more. Oh, yes, I know. You're very nice. Yes, you are. You're very good. Oh, you're a bit damp as well because you've been outside, but yes. Oh. Okay, right. To get on with the CDs, what do we got? Wait, what is this? Santana! Huh, I have a Santana CD. Uh, Supernatural. Um, I don't know any of these tracks. I didn't even know I had the CD. Why do I keep finding CDs I didn't realize I owned? Huh? Like, I don't know a single track off of this. Not one bit. Um. I mean, Santana's a very vibey guitarist, really cool sounds. But I don't know a single thing about this album, so let me quickly check to see if I can find another one. Wait, and what? How many CDs are there that I don't remember buying? C6 Steve. This is like blues and stuff. I remember he was on Top Gear one time. I wonder if I just bought this because I saw him on Top Gear. I would imagine that was probably the case. <laughs> He's like blues guitar, really cool. Um, big old beard, as you can see, but outside of that, I don't, I don't really know. <laughs> I don't know either of these albums. Why do I have so many albums I don't know anything about? Why do I own these? Why haven't I listened to them? What am I doing? What's going on? <laughs> so another album I haven't listened to much. She said, "Destroy times like vines." Uh, it's some form of metal, like metal corey stuff, if I remember rightly. I don't really know them a huge amount. It's plastic head again. It is plastic head again. I'm assuming that they had um, cheap albums somewhere, plastic head, because that's the second one I've got that I haven't really listened to. But yeah, you got lyric book, pretty standard sort of. Lyrics going on inside. Gotta love the black, orange, and white color combo. It's a very solid, very solid combo. And um, but again, in terms of actually the songs on the album, I don't know any. It's oh, it's really random. Like I don't know where. I I'm, I remember having this CD, but I don't know why I've not listened to it. Why I don't remember a single track off of it. But. Let's have a quick look for another one, because, you know, there's not much of a recommendation there. Um, wait, what was that one? Oh! Okay, this is probably not a bad one. 
Uh, this is just a quick little, like, random indie kind of songs. I know, it's a random ripped CD. But on the back of this, it's OK Computer by Mojo. So I don't even know if that's what that CD is. It's very likely not. There's two of them! What is on these magical discs? Why have I got all of this? Are you all right, dog? Um, so apparently it had Human League, Gary Newman, The Knife. Like, what? What is this CD? What, what actually is on this as well? I have no idea. What is going on? This box is this this box that I've just been going through has got so many CDs I haven't got a clue about, and I've just seen two more. Ay ay ay! Right, you may have heard in the last video I saw two CDs that I didn't know a thing about, and it's Ribbons Royal, which I remember being very I, I sort of remember being pretty light, jazzy, chilled out music, but I don't have a clue about song to song. And this by Stephen John Kalinich. A world of peace must come. Ah, what is going on? The deer, the elk, the raven, the magic hand, lonely man. I don't, I don't know a thing about either of these albums. I mean, there's pretty cool art. I like, I like those little Pac-Man ghost style things. They're cool. But and it's on the CD as well. That's really nice. But I don't know what kind of music they are. I'm going to guess probably not metal, probably more of a like indie vibe sort of thing. This CD is wedged in there. Oh, it's got the track listing on the CD. It's kind of cool. But I don't have a... Actually, musically, I don't know what these are. Wrote this at 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock? What? Man wrote this whole album at a random specific time. That's a bit strange. Um, I don't know what this is. So this is mostly instrumental by the looks of it. There's only vocals on... Well, maybe it's not. Because it says, Ribbons is Yerick Biscoff. So it's one guy like producing it and making it all and writing it all. And there it says, Vocals on Tongue Tied by Mayumi Haida. And lyrics by Zach Pennington for one of the other tracks. But it was all mixed and mastered by Yerick Biscoff. Mmm, Biscoff Biscuits. From Ireland? Dot IE? That's Ireland, right? Oh no, there's a sneeze. No! Oh. Anyway, I don't really know either of these albums. They look kind of cool, but I don't think they're really my vibe. They seem like they're going to be quite indie, light jazzy music which I don't really listen to a huge amount um, I like if I want to chill out I generally just put on just like lo-fi girl or something along those lines and just have that in the background or city pop recently I've been getting into a lot of uh, Japanese city pop it's really cool um, that's a they're weird CDs hopefully we get one that I actually know something about next this box is what's going on and so, the random albums continue. Dead Man in Reno. A name I recognise. I don't know any of the tracks, man. I don't know any of the tracks. I don't know what kind of music they are. It's, I, Dead Man in, Re Man in Reno sounds like it could be metal by the album cover. It potentially is as well, but I have absolutely no idea. No idea at all. Well, we got vocals, lead guitar, bass guitar, and drums and vocals. Sounds like it could well be metal. Um, they were using a at yahoo.com email address. Wow. Wait, there's live tracks on here? Oh no, they were recorded in. They were recorded in two different places. That's kind of cool. Yeah, two different places at two different times. Huh. Interesting. Don't know a thing about the music, but um, kind of cool that they like recorded in two separate studios. Slightly unusual, because normally they try to keep it all in one place. And then Spectre. Near-death experience. 
What? The violent stink of twitching terror, astral descent, climax, phantom reality, visualization, whatever the case may be, disturbing signal, unio mystica, his mind ravaged, his memory shattered. What on earth is this? It's another Plastic Head album. That would explain it. Is there anything more about it inside? Because... What the... What is going on? I can't... What What metal song is it where they went to a mental asylum and recorded the screams from the mental asylum? Because I remember that. That's like a really... Like, crazy thing to do. But it's a really, like, haunting cool sound. I can't remember what band or album it was. For some reason this this album made me think of that. Maybe there's a chance it's this one. I would be amazed if it is. Um, I don't remember much about Spectre. I, I feel like they're kind of death metal but that's just a guess. I don't again track listing there is no track listing apart from 10 stages of near death. Um, so Two, again, albums I don't really know about. And uh, I'm hoping we get to something I do know about soon, because, boy, is there... Yes, there's stuff I know about. Yes! <laughs> Where is all this stuff coming from? Why haven't I listened to it? Ay, ay, ay. Fantastic. Okay, here we go. Okay, we'll do these two together. Now, these ones I kind of know... I mean, The Sword are a fantastic band. I first heard of them in Guitar Hero 2. Their song Freya was there. It was an instrumental song. It's very big, fuzzy guitars and stuff like that. Um, they've got really cool artwork and just a style behind it. And this album was the one that came after... Or was it even... It might have been... Because there was those two, and then was there one in between? I can't. I can't really remember. Um, but yeah, this is. Oh. Sure, that's the sound you want your CDs to be making. Uh, <laughs> this is the stored Low Country. Um, the album, like, I've not listened to a huge amount compared to their other two. But as a band, the Sword are fantastic. Fantastic sound, especially their first two albums. They're really cool. And this other one I picked up. This I have no idea where it came from. It's a promotional copy, not for sale again. I'm, I don't know how I've got so many of these promo not for sale things. Uh, but this is like metal songs, but covered in a very light, happy, jingly way. Female vocals. It's very... Very relaxing to listen to. And they've got some classic metal tracks on here, I must say. We've got The Trooper, Symphony of Destruction, Rock the Night, Seasons in the Abyss, We're Not Gonna Take It, Blackened, Thunderstruck, Run to the Hills, Paranoid, and Princess of the Night. So, I... <laughs> I wonder if these are still about. They've got a MySpace on here, myspace.com slash hellsongs, and bodoglife.net slash music. It's from 2008. I don't know if you'll be able to find these anywhere. It's Hymns in the Key of 666. They're very relaxing versions of some tracks that originally definitely not so relaxing. Um, I don't know if you'll find them, but if you can, any of them are fantastic. The Trooper's really, really good. I remember The Trooper being really good. And Paranoid as well. It's so much slower, but it's really cool. Really, really cool. Would recommend trying to find that Hellsong stuff if you can. Okay, we've got Serge Tankian, the front man for System of a Down's solo stuff. And this is the album most people probably know songs off of. This is Elect the Dead. And this is the album that has Empty Walls and Sky Is Over. They are probably the two most well-known... Oh, what? Search Tankian songs. The album itself is missing. <laughs> but it's fine, it's fine. Oh, one sec. Hey! We've got a lyric book. 
Very small little writing, uh, small little font. Um, I love Sister with a Down, and Serge is great as well. What have we got going on in here? Has he got a little... He has written a little thing in here, I think. Let's have a read, shall we, of this little excerpt, I'm assuming from Serge in here. Yeah. The diversity of sounds rule my ever-presence with their highs and blows, encompassing the totality of sensual experience. I'm a child of the sirens of knowledge, a warrior for truth in a world of washed perspectives and harsh realities. My voice cries, the initial cry of the unborn into this perplexing illusion. I long for the realisation of the human drama, the defeat of the dogs of war, and the unity of existence. The beloved gods of virtue have been undersold for the bleeding bread of empathy. I now await the triumphant roar of destiny, dressed in the inviting hands of a mother, perplexed by discovery, aroused by spirit. The door is open, the road transformed. The exit code to civilization is hacked beyond despair, chased by the moon towards the freeing sun on our journey to light. This is an open plea to the beautiful insanity of your hearts. It is time to consummate the kiss of oblivion into the obsidian of love. The empty walls of the unthinking majority hide money for the elusive. Hang on. The empty walls of the unthinking majority hide money for the elusive afterlife and do not feed us instead, thereby saving us from the conclusive environmental therapy that the sky is over. The baby is run over by the careless honking antelope, who, quoting from the book of Lie Lie Lie, cries Pray the Lord and pass the ammunition. The ground rumbles and out flies Beethoven's something screaming elect the dead surge now i'm pretty sure that's all the tracks that last passage it is that last passage was all the tracks oh lie 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 as well as a great track that last paragraph i read was basically just all of the tracks back to back with a few extra words added in that's kind of cool I mean, that, why not uh, um, why not? Serge, man, he knows what he's doing. Um, tracks to listen to off of the album. Empty Walls is a banger. Um, lie, 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 I forgot about as well. I mean, you have to kind of le like Serge and his like vocal style, really. Um, if you don't... Wait, what? How does this... Oh, I was putting it on the wrong side. Ignore me. If you don't like Serge's vocals, then you're definitely not going to like this. But um, yeah, Empty Wars, Skies Over, La 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 would be the free, I would say, to listen to. Believe it or not, it's another Serge Tankian album. I actually have two Serge albums. I remember getting this one. I remember buying this. It's a fiver. Look at that. And this was when I was really into, like, first getting into System of a Down. I was like, yes, I want everything to do with them. And this was, I think, the latest album at the time. Yeah, it came out in 2010, and that must have been around about when I got it. Uh, this album has Borders Are, which is a great, great track. The rest, Borders Are and then Deserving, which is like the sort of follow-up bit. Both of them are great. I don't really remember the rest, though. Because it probably has been about ten years since I listened to the album, like, front to back. Um, but it's Surge... Again, like I said with the last one, you have to like his like vocal style. If you don't, you're gonna struggle with this. Um, but obviously, it's you know very politically charged a lot of the time. Lots of points are trying to be made. Like borders of lines in the sand, I think is the sort of the whole vibe of that one. It's literally about you know how borders between countries. It's just a line, you know, made up by someone and suddenly the rules are different in each different place. What what makes this? Who sets this? That sort of style of thing. And uh, it's very apocalyptic looking at the artwork on the back here. Um, but yeah, I need to listen to this album more. I do like Surge and I, like I said, I really, really like System of a Down. So I need to listen to this this one some more. The other, the Alone of the Dead, I've listened to a decent amount, but Imperfect Harmonies, not so much. At least not recently. Right. <laughs> Sex Pistols. Never mind the box. Classic, right? Pretty Vacant, Liar, God Save the Queen, Anarchy in the UK, Holidays in the Sun, Problems. 
It's just a good album, right? It's classic, like, punky stuff. <sighs> I don't know, man. Anarchy in the UK is such a good track. Obviously, it's, a, it's on Guitar Hero 3 again. That, that album. Oh, look. Little mini poster as well. Kind of cool. Uh, no lyrics going on in this one at all. They've got the songs and the song length, but that's all you're getting from them. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, really, it's kind of an iconic album, right? I mean, that that album cover stands out so much, the bright yellow and pink. But if you haven't, if you somehow don't know who Sex Pistols are, um, give Anarchy in the UK and Pretty Vacant a listen. They're probably the two most well-known tracks. They're right up there. Uh, that's, yeah, I don't really have much more to say because I don't think there is a huge amount more I need to touch on when it comes to these guys, so yeah, that's it. Ooh, oh, oh, huh? Static X, Wisconsin Death Trap, this one, I'm pretty sure. Is that it? It is! Ah! Oh, was the album that's Push It On? Did it also have, um... Skinny Man or not? Because that's the other Static X song I really know. Again, an album that I don't know how I've ended up with it because I don't, I've not listened to it very much. Like, Push It comes up on Spotify's, like, mixed things all the time and Skinny Man was on Need to be Most Wanted, which was actually the first time I really got into metal was, <laughs> was Need for Speed Most Wanted. It's such a weird, most wanted. Such a weird, like, entry point. But you had Avenged Sevenfold, Bullet for My Valentine, Static X on there, along with all their, like, you know, more electronic and whatever songs. But they had some good metal tracks on there. They had Hand of Blood, um, Blinded in Chains. It was great. And uh, Skinny Man. But I don't really know the rest of this album very well. Again, I, I just haven't listened to it. Push It is a classic that most people would know of, but the rest of them I'm not, I'm not, I don't know them enough to be able to talk about them really. But yeah, give give Push It and give Skinny Man, it's not on this album, but give that a listen. It's one of those songs that just brings back memories of riding around Rockport, taking down the blacklist. Like, <laughs> so much fun that game. I'm, I gotta try and find a way to replay it. So good. Oh, yes, 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 yes. We've got some really good albums left in here. Fantastic. Okay. First up, End of Heartache. This is um, Kill Switch Engage again. This is the album that has Rosa Sharin, The End of Heartache, which is an absolute banger. The live version that's recorded is so good. When Darkness Falls as well. Oh, man, this album had some good tracks on it. This wasn't the one that had this fire, was it? No, that's um, Little uh, Arms of Sorrow? Is this called that? Whatever it is. Um, but yeah, end of, end, oh, end of Heartache, When Darkness Falls, Rosa Sharin. Banger tracks, man. Uh, may have had some slight technical issues there. I'm not sure how much of my talking about this was recorded, but I think most of it was. And um, yeah, End of Heartache, Rosa Sharin, When Darkness Falls would be the tracks I'd listen to. All tracks I've learned on guitar. You'll notice there's a bit of a weird similarity with the songs that I recommend and the songs that I've learned on guitar. Uh, but yeah, When Darkness Fall... No, not When Darkness The End of Heartache by Kill Switch Engage. Great album. It's just a great album, man. It's so good. Oh, we're near the end of this box. We're actually closing in on the end. And we've got another classic metalcore album. All the remains, the fall of ideals, this calling six, not alone, uh, we stand all bangers. If I was only, if I was going to recommend only one track, it would probably be this calling, which is the first track on the album. Another one I'd be tempted to say would be six because the Guitar Hero two. I know, again, Guitar Hero all the time, but. It's got such a good riff. Oh, 
<laughs> That's exactly how it goes, I promise. This will do it. You'll see what, like, literally, play them, play me in the song, and you'll notice no difference. I promise. Um, but yeah, that, oh, oh dear. All right, there are lyrics in here. But they're very short. Is this all the lyrics? I guess it might be. Yeah, no, it is. It's just, I suppose the, the album itself is quite short. Oh no, all the pages are stuck together. Oh, it's, it's a classic metalcore album, this. All that remains the fall of idea was like... Again, I, I'd say listen to it the whole way through. I actually did fairly recently. And it's so good. It's so good. It, it, is, it is of its time, obviously, slightly, but... It still holds up, man. It still holds up really well. It really does. It's 2006. Wow. What? It's over 15 years old. Oh, my. Ay, ay, ay. But yeah, no, this Calling All Six would be the, the two I'd say if you've not heard All That Remains, give one of them a listen. This Calling, I'm pretty sure it's got a music video, I'm not sure about Six, I don't know if they did for it in the end. Um, but this Calling is the first track on the album, first one I thought of, so give it a listen. Ooh, we have a couple of Pearl Jam albums. We have Yield, which I don't really know at all. I think I just must have been like, oh, it's Pearl Jam, I know Pearl Jam, I know even Flo, I know Jeremy. Um, so I'm going to buy this album as well. But I don't recognise a single track because I don't think I've listened to it very much. But so, ignoring Yield, because I do not know much about it, Pearl Jam's 10, by far their most iconic album, I would say. Once, Evenflow, Alive, Why Go, Black, Jeremy, Je Jeremy, <laughs> Jeremy, Oceans, Porch, Garden, Deep, Release, Alive, with a live version on here, apparently. So I'm assuming these are like bonus tracks as well, Wash and Dirty Frank? Maybe it should be wa Wash Dirty Frank. I don't know if I'd want to do that. Um, but yeah, tracks to listen to. Even Flow, Alive, and Jeremy. They're probably the three that people know from Pearl Jam. Obviously, Even Flow was in Guitar Hero 3. Again, another Guitar Hero song. I know, I know. But they had such a... That, that the set list in Guitar Hero 3 was so good. Um, their classic rock, I suppose, would be the way I'd... Maybe not... I guess classic rock is how I'd describe Pearl Jam. Um, really cool guitar solos. Some big catchy kind of choruses in there as well and some little progressive bits 1992 it's 30 years old this album what how how is that the case ay 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 yeah so i'd say even flow alive or jeremy would be recommendations enjoy oh some more classic rock blue oyster cult Agents of Agents of Fortune, I think it's called. Yeah, Agents of Fortune. Um, so this is the album that has "Don't Fear the Reaper" on it, which you know is by far their most well-known song. I would say. Uh, Seas on Flavor Rock and Roll is probably up there as well. Um, in terms of other tracks on here, this ain't the summer of love. Of and I don't recognize a huge amount of the others, if I'm being honest. I just haven't heard it. I haven't listened to it that much. Again, it's another album that I got because I really like Don't Fear the Reaper, but I haven't had time and haven't been able to listen through the whole thing, so I haven't got many thoughts on the rest of it. It's not even in here! <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> even if I wanted to listen to it, I can't. Oh. Where's that gone? Um, look at that. Look at them all on the guitars. Rocking and rolling. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, no, smashing it. Um, didn't think of themselves as a pop band at all. I suppose they weren't really, were they? I say a classic rock, but um, yeah, Don't Feel a Reaper. Banging song. Banging song. 
Okay, another machine head album. This one though, Burn My Eyes? I think it's Burn My Eyes? Yeah, it's, it's My Eyes. I wasn't sure it was My Eyes or Their Eyes or The Eyes. Uh, this has a couple of really big machine head tracks. It's not the album that I keep referring to when I talk about machine head that's my favorite, um, but it is up there. It's probably second, um, and that's thanks to Davidian and Old. They are so fun to play on guitar. Yes, I know, I've said it again. But I mean, Machine had a kind of groovy, fresh metal. There's some mix of all of that, like a big cauldron. And um, Davidian and Old, they hit hard. Like, Old especially is really cool. Like, really big. Um, the rest of the tracks, I again, it's been so long since I listened to this album. It's one that I listened to on that journey that I talked about before, but I don't, I don't remember the rest. I don't remember the rest at all. The Davidian and Old really do still stand. They still stand up pretty well. They still stand up pretty well. Let freedom reign with a shotgun blast. Banging. Banging, banging, banging. Oh my gosh, they thanked so many people. They're all here. Ay, ay, ay. Wow. But yeah, no, Machine Head, Burn My Eyes. Davidian and Old, two standout tracks. The rest of the album I need to listen to again. I need to listen for it, but those two tracks are so good. So good. There's some really good live versions of Davidian as well, I'd say, to maybe look up and see if you can find. I can't remember exactly what concert it is, but just literally Machine Head Davidian live. Enter and away you go. You'll find one, I'm sure. Okay, we've got a couple of slightly less known ones for me here. Oh, that album. Uh, this is Pantheon I, The Wanderer and His Shadow, I think it's called. The Wanderer and His Shadow, yeah. Um, again, it's one of those albums I bought that was really cheap. It's another plastic head one. I've got so many plastic head things um, that I haven't listened to. It was obviously there was a time where I was just like getting them from a certain place but not really listening to the music I was buying and then I've just you know you know how life is you don't have time to listen to everything and then obviously when Spotify came out I've basically been listening to most of my music on Spotify since then so I haven't gone back and listened to these CDs that I bought but didn't get a chance to listen to um, pretty cool like rooms and stuff that's also on the back there but yeah, I don't really know what to say about Pantheon I or One. Cool artwork, I'll give them that, like really cool artwork. But I don't know much about the band, I think it's death metal of some sort. Oh, oh dear. Let's close it that way around then. There we go. Um, so what we're going to do as well, we're going to look at dislocated styles. Crazy. Um, from what I remember, this reminded me a bit of Limp Biscuit, that sort of weird rap metal mix kind of stuff. Uh, 2001, this came, album came out. Uh, Pin the tail on the honky. Tracks that I remember. <sighs> Fire in the Hole, because this, again, is one that I listened to on that journey. Fire in the Hole, I remember, I'd be like, oh, what is going on here? Fun old riff, you got all the lyrics in here. But yeah, no, it's like rap metal sort of vibes. Um, I didn't, re <laughs> didn't really get into it or enjoy it that much. Like, I love Reggie the Machine. Obviously, but I didn't quite get into this. I'm also not massively into like Limp Bizkit or stuff like that. But uh, yeah, dislocated styles. Give Fire in the Hole a listen. See what you think. It's the one track on that album that stands out in any way to me. So uh, yeah, see what you think. Final CD of the box is the Dio the Collection. Dio's got obviously 
a lot of tracks that people know. And on here, what have we got? We've got Holy Diver, which, yeah, is probably his most well-known by quite a way. I, I actually, Rainbow in the Dark's up there as well. Both of those are really well-known songs, really catchy choruses, just showing his amazing vocal talent, because this man could sing so well. I love the fact that he was in the Tenacious D Pick a Destiny film as well. It's just him and Meatloaf in that first like five minute segment. It's just manic. <laughs> it's absolute manic. Oh man, they're, oh, they're both gone. Jesus. <sighs> yeah, I mean, Dio is one of those legendary vocalists. Like, it was so, so good. Oh snap! Hang on. Wait, he was born in Portsmouth. Ah. That's not. Wait, New Hampshire. New Hampshire. Ah, it's not Portsmouth in the UK then? It's Portsmouth somewhere else. I was going to say, I've been to Portsmouth before. Oh, yeah, of course he was in Rainbow, wasn't he? I don't... I don't think this compilation has, like... I mean, it definitely doesn't have, like, classic Rainbow songs. I love Rainbow. Richie Blackmore, great guitarist. Um, but, yeah, it's... D oh! It's in one piece still, it's fine. It's Dio. Uh, it's hard to say don't... Like, if you don't know who Dio is... It's got to be Rainbow in the Dark and Holy Diver as the tracks to listen to. He's got such good vocals, but I would say just listen to Stargazer by Rainbow as well if you want to hear Dio, because, oh, what a track. It's eight minutes long, but who cares? It's so worth the time. It's so worth the eight minutes. It's such a good song. It's so good. Some of you may notice I have quite a large box here. This is the last of the CDs I'm getting rid of. There's still a lot of CDs upstairs that I'm keeping. I'm also going to document them. So this is the last time we're probably going to have albums that I don't necessarily recognize a huge amount from. Because all the ones I'm keeping are bangers. Like in my head, they're such good albums. So uh, let's see what we got. Even so, these are great. Wait, I'm getting rid of the, oh, okay, fine. So, Kill Switch Engage. Um, this is. This was a self titled, wasn't it? Yeah, self titled album. I remember the single Reckoning. I haven't listened to this one a huge amount, um, but I remember Reckoning. And I've played it on Clone Hero, and it's really fun. It's a really short, high beat energy song. Um, this has still got Howard on vocals, hasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. They used some vocals for this one. Um, the Reckoning is a great track. Anything else I remember? Save Me, I think, as well? I don't remember a huge amount off of this album, but that much I do. Pretty standard kind of lyric book, some cool artwork going on in it. Yeah, no, Re Reckoning is just a full, like, fast-paced Killswitch album. I remember when this album was new. I don't want to know when it came out. When it just released. Oh my god, it's 2009. Uh, <laughs> it's so old. <laughs> the uh, Reckoning, um, The Forgotten, and Save Me are the tracks that somewhere in my brain they're ringing, ringing true. It's been a long time since I listened to that album specifically, but Reckoning, after all these years, I can still remember how it sounds like. You are your god to my Exactly, that's how the drumming goes. I promise you, it is. Righto, next up we have got... Ooh, Otep. More Otep. You may remember quite a while ago we had Otep. Um, oh, this is the album that has ghost flowers on it. This, is this a live version? Yeah. So this is a live Otep album. Probably not a huge amount of these... Copies of this around, I might actually be able to sell it for something. Um, Battle Ready, Filthy, Confrontation, Rise, Rebel, Resist, Trick, Ghost Flowers, 
so many good tracks and uh Otepa again very what do I, what's the uh very forward with their views um Otep Shim, Shem, Shemaya uh is the vocalist um and yeah she knows what she thinks and she doesn't care if you don't think the same um she yeah she's very forward but produces some very good music i don't know what's going on this poor pigo um but it's a, it's a live album i can never get hugely into live albums just i, I know it's really it's like it's almost impossible to get the feel of a live album right because being at a concert you feel it rather than hear it a lot of the time so replicating that is very very difficult in album format there's very few albums i've ever heard that have got anywhere close to having that kind of vibe so yeah but I, give otep a listen if you haven't heard of otep definitely definitely listen to them ghost flowers is a great song uh, as well as Rise, Rebel, Resist. It's some of the songs off of that previous album they had, the Sevas Tree? Sevas Tri? Sevas Tra? Oh, no, my brain. Whichever one of those it is. But, yeah. Give it a tip a listen. Very cool metal... kind of rap elements some of the times as well. Um, yeah. Give, give it a tip a listen. Okay, this album I know for sure is not mine. This is definitely my brother's. Um, and I don't know a thing about it. It's, <laughs> it's Kings of Leon again. £1.99, it was a bargain whenever he bought it. I don't know, a single track off of it. And then there's another, this, we had the other two Play Me The Blues albums much earlier on. These are like blues compilations, so you've got Eric Clapton, Muddy Waters, um, Big Joe Williams... John Lee Hooker, like Jeff Beck, all those sort of artists. And I think it's like a 12 CD collection in total. I've only got three of them. Um, but I just fancied like getting some blues music and listening to some blues stuff. So, yeah, interesting, these two. Two more that I'm not, I don't really remember a huge amount about. But I can see some that I really, really do know about. Oh, periphery free. The Price is Wrong, Motormouth, Marigold, Remain Indoors, The Way the new News Goes, Absol... Absol... Absolom? Absolom, I think is how it's going to be said. Um, it's Periphery. This is their, like... Th was this... So this isn't their third album. It's their third self-titled album. But before Periphery 3, they released uh, Juggernaut, Alpha and Omega. And this... There's quite a few fairly long songs on Periphery 3. And there's tracks like Marigold. So songs on here that stand out to me are Marigold, Remain Indoors, and The Price Is Wrong. They're the three I would listen to. I actually saw Periphery on their tour for this album. Yeah, it would have been this album. And Remain Indoors Live was so... And, and the way the news goes live, they were so good. So good. Um, yeah, Periphery 3, Select Difficulty, it's it's periphery, it's progressive, very guitar-focused music, and RLF, Periphery, a great band, man. I haven't listened to their last album that much, and Alpha and Omega is my favourite, which is probably a bit of a weird take. A lot of people, I think Periphery 2 is probably their favourite album, but the Alpha and Omega double album was the one for me. So good. Um, yeah, the way the news goes, remain indoors, Marigold and the price is wrong. Give them a listen, see what you think. Periphery are a great, great band, in my eyes. Obviously, completely subjective, all my takes. <laughs> Mate, it's the best Killswitch album. Oh, is it? Actually, maybe it's not. It's hard for me between two for Killswitch. So, this one is As Daylight Dies. This is the album that has... Daylight Dies, The Arms of Sorrow, My Curse, um, Unbroken, and yeah, they're the main tracks off of it. This is 
I think this is probably the album that made them go massive. Like, End of Heartache was big, but My Curse and Arms of Sorrow. Like, again, My Curse was on Guitar Hero 3 is a bonus track. It's, it's really fun to play on that game. And it's really, really fun to play on guitar, especially if you can get the pinch harmonic just right. The ba ba da 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 ba da ba da ba da ba Not that noise. Sorry, dog. <laughs> oh, what was that noise? That's not a pinch harmonic. What am I doing? I'm going crazy. Um. <laughs> Oh, it's like a fold out from the middle one we got. There's the band. Broken glass. I'm assuming bullet. I can't really. I'm not exactly sure what's going on with it. But uh, anyway, As Daylight Dies by Killswitch Engage. Give As Daylight Dies the track a listen. And My Curse, if you haven't heard it. I have thought most of you would of if you've clicked on this and knowing anything about Killswitch Engage. But yeah, My Curse is a fantastic track with so many riffs, a really nice chorus, really cool intro. And if you're looking for someone to play on guitar, would recommend it. It's an album I didn't realise I physically owned. It's The Stage by Avenger Sevenfold. Obviously one of their more recent ones. Um, and it's got some pretty long tracks. Obviously The Stage itself was the, le the launch single with that insane video, it's eight and a half minutes long. Obviously Avenged Sevenfold are fairly, fairly well known for long songs. Over the years they've had quite a few. And uh, yeah, the stage is a banger. God damn as well. Um, I don't really remember many of the other tracks on here though. I haven't listened to it a huge amount. Like I said, I didn't realize I had the physical album. The stage itself I know really well, but the rest of it, I'd need to, I need to listen to it. Like why have I, like, there's so many albums I didn't realise I actually bought. And, like, I would have bought this, because when did this come out? This was 20... 2016. Why I bought this, I have no idea, because I was listening to basically all my music on Spotify at that point. Ugh, what the? <laughs> so, why I bought a physical copy, I don't know. Maybe I was... No, my car did have an aux cable at that point. I have no idea. Because, like, for a while I had a car that didn't have an aux or, like, a way to listen to music. So I was just buying CDs to do it that way rather than plugging in the phone. I don't know why I got this album. But, anyway, it's Avenged Sevenfold. The, the stage is probably the track to listen to. It's quite long. Eight and a half minutes. And um, fairly progressive. But it's got a really cool video. So I'd say just sit back, chill out, watch and enjoy the video and go from there. Um, I need to listen to the rest of this album more. Deary me. <laughs> Next up. Ooh, let's do this one. Nine Inch Nails, The Fragile. The Fragile Nothing Halo 14. I thought this was just called The Fragile. But I might be wrong. This is a double album. And it has a lot of tracks. Do I still have the booklet in here? Yes, we do. Oh my gosh. It's massive. It's a massive booklet. Um, the Day the World Went Away, The Frail, The Fragile are all really, really good tracks. Complication as well. Obviously, it's Trent Reznor doing pretty much everything, I'm pretty sure. Have a look. Written by him and Danny Lona, who also did some additional guitars. Um, oh, and there's like backing chants and stuff that were done by different people, and there's a whole load of guests actually. If you look on there, you'll see all those guests and stuff that have been credited. It's crazy how many people he has sort of helping him out, but he writes the music and gets them to perform it most of the time, is my knowledge of it. And um, this is probably the Nine Inch Nails album I've listened to the most, weirdly enough. Um, it was the first one I got. And it was like a double album for the same price as a single, and I didn't really know Nine Inch Nails, so I thought, oh, I'll just get a lot of their music. So I did. 1999 this came out. Wow, I didn't realize it was that old. But, yeah, no, The Day the World Went Away, it's, 
it's Nine Inch Nails, it's very, it's not, not particularly happy music. Um, so, you know, if you're not feeling great, then put it on and it'll probably vibe with you quite well. But, yeah, no, The Day the World Went Away, The Fragile, um, The Big Come Down as well. I seem to remember, but it's been a, again, it's been a good few years since I listened to any songs off of this album. I've not listened to much Nine Inch Nails recently at all. Um, but this is my most listened to Nine Inch Nails album of all time, weirdly enough. Weirdly enough. So yeah, The Fragile, Nine Inch Nails. Huh, oh, oh, okay. I don't know much about this one, I'm going to be honest. Nine Inch Nails, Pretty Hate Machine. Uh, this is the album that has Head Like a Hole in it, which is one of Nine Inch Nails' most well-known songs. And I know that song. I don't know if I know any of the others. At all. At all, at all, at all. 1989. 33 years old, this album. Holy moly. Again, produced by Trent Reznor with Flood, John Fryer, Keith LeBlanc... And Adrian Sherwood. Adrian Sherwood. Where do I know that name from? And why do I know that name? Oh, we've got versical lyrics. Interesting. And some more artwork on the back with some lyrics at the bottom there. Pretty cool. Um, but again, I don't know much about this album. And in fact, I don't know anything about it. It doesn't even exist. What? Well, Where's it gone? What? <laughs> How does this keep happening? <laughs> Why do I have so many CDs when the CDs aren't even in the cases? What is, what is going on? Ah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, Nine Inch Nails, pretty hate machine. Give head like a whole listen, because that's the only song I know off of it. Oh, dear. All right, it's Kaiser Chiefs. It's employment. Uh, this is the album that has Predict a Riot. I predict a riot, sorry. Every Day I Love You Lesson. That's na 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 na. Um, oh my god, as well. <sighs> Good album. Good album. Again, you know, British indie rock and some really, really good songs. Some really good songs on here, actually. Employment by Kaiser Chiefs. I predict a riot is such a classic. Such a classic. Um, what else is there to say about them? I don't really know. Oh, wow, look, they've got, um, oh, what game's that from? Is that from, is it Game of Life? That, like, that dial? That style of dial? I, see, I feel like it is, you know? It might just be some other game, some other board game, but I'm sure it's in Game of Life as well. Oh, look, you can put your name. Wait. And they've got all sorts of board games. They've got like a Monopoly style thing. Snakes and Ladders going on. Oh, this is a really cool lyric book. This is a really cool lyric book. Yeah, big fan of this. Good job whoever designed and put this together. Really nice. And um, so if you haven't heard Kaiser Chiefs, then you probably don't know. I predict a riot. Na 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 na. Um, oh my god, or Every Day I Love You Less and Less, and all of those tracks are really pretty good. It's a pretty good album. I need to listen to the whole thing the whole way through, because I'm sure there's some of these other tracks are worth having to listen to. I just don't know them enough, because I've only probably heard them once or twice when listening through the full album. But the, all of those, I think, were released as singles, and they're all really good songs. Really good music. Ah. Oh. Slayer Redemption, is this called? Nope, Repentless. That makes more sense. That's a that's a much more Slayer name than Redemption. Um, I don't know any of these tracks. Why do I have this album? Why am I here? <laughs> what? I bought this in 2015. Well, it, was, it came out in 2015, so I must have got it post-2015. Why did I buy this? I don't really like Slayer. Of the big four, they're probably my least favourite to listen to. they got a few nice tracks, but I don't recognise a single song off of this album. The CD's not even inside. What's going on? What? 
What? Where is? Where are all my CDs? Why are they not inside their boxes? It's got a kind of cool, like, kind of cool visuals and stuff in the book. Kerry King, look at him, man with a legend. Look at that beard, crazy. Um, but I don't listen to much. Like, uh, it's just not, not quite my vibe, you know. A few tracks that I really like, but like I said, not not in general. Um, oh, and this, I'm going to quickly go over this because I haven't listened to this album very much, but I know a lot of people really like Iowa by Slipknot. Oh, it's a really shiny case. Oh, three quid. Um, I don't even know if I know any... Disaster Piece. Do I know any of the other tracks on here? No. Iowa itself, I think, but... A, a Slipknot album is good. This is probably my least listened to. Even, like, I've listened to the first one more than Iowa. Maybe I just need to listen to it more, because I know lots of people really rate it as an album. Um, I am not yet one of them. Who knows? We'll see. I'll give it a listen at some point. What do we got next? What do we got next? Oh, wait. Okay. Yep, sure. Favourite Worst Nightmare, Arctic Monkeys. Another fantastic album. Their first album is my favourite, but this is definitely next. Um, it's, I mean, it's basically the soundtrack to the in-betweeners, right, this album. Uh, do me a favour, fluorescent adolescent, 505, old yellow bricks, the bad thing. Oh, all of the tracks are really good. Just give this whole album a listen. I don't even know what more to say. It's like mid-2000s British indie rock, like, on a tee. Um, D is for Dangerous, Balaclava, Teddy Picker, Brian Storm... Like, both of Arctic Monkeys' first two albums absolutely smashed it. Like, you know, the awkward second album. They did a really good job with this. It doesn't quite peak as high for me as the as the first, um, which is definitely my favourite. But it's not far off. It's not far off. And all the tracks are really good. There's not really many fillers. Um... Yeah, I like I looking at them all, I'm hearing them all in my head, which is always a good sign, right? Like if you can remember every single track on an album just by looking at the name of it, you can remember the melody. The artist's obviously done quite a good job and uh yeah, Arctic Monkeys, mid two thousands, absolutely smashed it. I'm pretty sure I got this album at release, it was two thousand seven. Fifteen years old. Oh, oh no. Oh no, this album's 15 years old. Ah. Oh, this is just making me feel old doing this now. <laughs> but yeah, Oxygen Monkey's favourite worst nightmare. Banger, banger of an album. <laughs> Ramstein. Ramstein, Ramstein, Ramstein. I reckon I bought this album because of Du Hast. And I reckon I bought it because of Du Hast, because of Guitar Hero World Tour. I haven't listened to much Ramstein. Maybe I should, because they're like, you get that industrial sounds really cool. Um, but I just, I don't know, I've not, not quite gotten the vibe. I don't, I would say maybe it's because I wouldn't understand it because it's all in German, but that doesn't matter because I love baby metal and that's all in Japanese. So it doesn't matter, right? Like, language doesn't matter. Um, I just haven't listened to them that much. I watched the, there was like a live concert on Amazon. Uh, they had like the sort of the recording of a live concert on Amazon Prime. And that was really cool. Um, obviously their pyro is like well known for being ridiculous like they have just huge things the lead singer I can't remember his name has got that like wingsuit that fires fire out the tips of it like crazy like absolutely insane um, but yeah Bukdik Sendshut Engel and Du Hast all tracks I recognise off of this album um, I would say Duhast and Engel are probably the two to listen to, if I remember rightly. Um, 
But again, I don't know the rest of the album too well on this one. So we had that like five CD Devin Townsend thing back right near the start of when I was doing these videos. I've apparently got another one. Not 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 like a cut, not a compilation, but just a single album. So this one is Epic Loud. <laughs> you could probably just look at the title like, yes, I know. Um, this is the one that has Lucky Animals on it. What else? What other tracks? Kingdom as well. A lot of people know Kingdom from Devin Townsend because there's video. There's a video of him playing it for like EMG TV or something on YouTube and just nailing the vocals. But to be honest, he does that most of the time anyway. Grace is on this album as well. Oh, this has got some really good songs. This has got some really good songs. I don't remember all of them, but Grace, Kingdom, and Lucky Animals, three songs I would recommend listening to. Slightly different vibes. Lucky Animals is very upbeat and jolly. Um, Kingdom is more traditional metal sounding stuff uh, and Grace is just a huge soundscape. There's some live versions of Grace that are so good. So good. I see off the Resonal Circus. I can't remember. If you just type in like Grace Devon Townsend live on YouTube, I'm sure it'll come up with the one I'm thinking of. It's such a good performance. They've, he's got the female vocalist. Oh, what's her name? What's her name? I'll be able to find out. Hang on. I found a Harkin CD in here. What's going on? It's just... Just... just uh, why are there CDs everywhere? Uh, I want to find... A neck? Something like that? Is the um, female vocalist's name? Let me see if I can find it. Uh, da, 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 da. Anek van Geiersbergen. That's the one. Yeah, no, she does a really, really good performance on this live one that I'm thinking of. So, yeah, so that's uh, Devon Townsend's... Wait. I bought this album... Hold up. When did I buy this album? Because it's got Transcendence on there, which is a really recent record. What the... Wait, what? I don't understand when I bought this. But anyway, yeah. Grace, Kingdom, Lucky Animals. Give it a lesson. What is this? What? The Musicals. It's a best of musicals. Um, I can't say... Uh, I mean, I've seen a few musicals, actually. I, I would be lying. But I can't say I'm a massive... Fan of them, really? <laughs> uh, I've seen a couple up in London in the West End. I saw, what, Lion King? I saw the Lord of the Rings musical. That was an interesting experience. That was a weird one. Um, what else did I see? Stomp? <laughs> like, like the, that Lion King performance is so good. Um, but what we've got on here, musicals, the great... Great songs, music from the best musicals in town. We've got The Heart Is On In Saigon from Miss Saigon. Mamma Mia from Mamma Mia. One Night In Bangkok from Chess. I don't recognise that one. Circle of Life from Lion King, of course. Macavity, The Mystery Cat from Cats. I haven't seen the Cats film, I'm not going to. And I haven't seen the Cats musical either, so I'm not sure about that one. Uh, Beauty and the Beast from Beauty and the Beast. Fame from Fame, Summer Nights from Greece. Okay, Singing in the Rain from Singing in the Rain. I could have danced all night from My Fair Lady. All that jazz from Chicago. Music of the Night from Phantom of the Opera. Is that the Phantom of the Opera? That song, or is that just called Phantom of the Opera? Because if it's not that, why is it not that? That was perfect vocals, by the way. I promise you. Um. I'm in love with a wonderful guy from South Pacific. Never heard of that. If I were a rich man from Fiddler on the Roof. Definitely heard of that. Edelweiss from Sound of Music. If I listened to it, maybe I would recognise it. And Time Warp from the Rocky Horror Show. What a mix of songs we've got going on there. 
Stop staring at the door, doggo. <laughs> You're just staring at the door. <laughs> I don't know if she's in the video, but there's going to be so many just where you can just see this dog just sitting, staring at the door. Oh. Oh dear. Um, but anyway, the musical's great songs. A bit of a weird one. I don't really know where I've got this from, but kind of a cool collection, right? There's some pretty good songs on there, so who knows? I mean, I don't know if you guys are into musicals, even if you're not. The Lion King is just a good film. Uh, but if you, if you ever get a chance to see The Lion King musical, that I would recommend. It was really good. Really good. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Stevie Ray Vaughan and Double Trouble, Texas Flood. Classic Ray Vaughan album. I bought this because of Pride and Joy, that's for sure. Guitar Hero 3, coming in again. Um, however, Texas Flood itself is a great track. Rude Mood. And Mary Had a Little Lamb. This guy is like an insane guitarist, by the way. Stevie Ray Vaughan. I don't think I'd ever be able to do anywhere near the stuff that he can do. Such a unique style. This was their debut album. Wow! It's only 40 years old. It's 40 years old next year. Oh, snap. Haha, <laughs> that's cool. That's really cool. But yeah, no, Texas... Texas Flood. Oh, there's like bonus tracks and stuff on here as well. There's like live versions. Because there's a weird, there's a cover of Mary Had a Little Lamb. Which is slightly odd. But it's cool. They're like country but very guitar focused music. And uh, yeah. Stevie's wife Lenny once told me how she'd be wakened in the night by Stevie playing in his sleep. My man was playing guitar in his sleep. You've heard of sleepwalking, you've heard of sleep talking. Well now, it's sleep guitaring. Jesus, what a man. Look at him go. Um, yeah, no, like... If I were to recommend one track to listen to, it would probably be Texas Flood. It's just, the guy's mental. He's so good. Uh, Pride and Joy is a great track as well, like I said, and Rude Mood. Any of those three you can't really go wrong with. Um, I'm pretty sure they might have all actually been featured on Guitar Hero over the years. I might be wrong with Texas Flood, but I'm pretty sure Rude Mood was at some point. Or maybe Rock Band, one of them. Uh, but yeah, Steve Ray Vaughan, Double Trouble, Texas Flood. Okay, a couple of albums I haven't listened to very much. I have no idea what Wills and the Willing Curbside is. The first song is called Coronation Street. I don't have a clue what this band is. It doesn't look very heavy, or it doesn't feel heavy. Working class records. I have to give it a listen, because I really don't know what this music is. What it is at all. And then Stereophonics. Uh, this is Performance and Cocktails. Again, I haven't listened to this album. Why do I own so many albums I just haven't listened to? I mean, I answered this before, but it's because I was buying albums and Spotify was around and I was just listening to music on Spotify. So I'd buy a CD and never listen to it because I was just searching Spotify, finding new stuff on Spotify instead. And the why I kept buying CDs, who knows? But that's, that's how I've got so many CDs, like both of these, that I've just not listened to. And I just don't know. I just don't know them, man. Don't know them at all. Okay, absolute classic album. Iron Maiden, Number of the Beast. If you don't know Iron Maiden, where have you been? Um, Invaders, Children of the Down, The Prisoner, 22 Acacia Avenue, The Number of the Beast, Run to the Hills, Gangland, Total Eclipse, Hallowed Be Thy Name. Hallowed Be Thy Name is probably my favourite track off of this album. Um, just the way that the riff goes, like the lovely sort of circular motion of it is really nice and the chorus is great. But this is this is classic Iron Maiden. This is like their most well-known album and probably the album that has the most good songs on it. <laughs> they are a band where I've sort of... I've got a few of their albums. I don't know if we're going to find any more, 
in here. They must be somewhere, because I had a few at one point, but I haven't seen them yet. And I would, like, listen to the album, and there'd be, like, two tracks that really stood out, and the rest just sort of melded into the background for me a lot of the time. So um, this one, having, like, six or seven of the nine tracks be really standing out in my head, great tracks, makes a change. <laughs> like, they're, they're very talented, obviously. Yannick Gers... Uh, what, Brian... Wait, what's his name? Brian Dickinson? Oh my god, how have I forgotten his name? Is that right? I'm gonna have to look it up now. Oh, wow. This is quite a chunky thing. I was right. Um, there's a lot going on in here. Steve Harris, that's it, on bass. Dave Murray. Um, Yannick Gers was also guitar, I think? I burr on drums. Is he on drums the entire time? Or did that change? Adrian Smith? Wait, Yannick Gers... Is Yannick Gers the drummer now? Did that change? I think that changed, right? I feel like that's the case. I don't know where that Yannick Gers name's come from, if not. But, yeah, I made a number of the beast. Give the whole album a listen. It's a really, really solid album. Just cla an absolute classic when it comes to, like, rock metal. Oh well it's cool. <laughs> Slipknot's first album. Quite a messy sounding album, but it's got some tracks that I definitely recognise on here. Eyeless, Wait and Bleed, Surfacing, Spit It Out, Prosthetics, uh, Scissors, like it's messy, it's raw, it's the origins of Slipknot. You can see, obviously, the masks and stuff are all in place. It's pretty chaotic, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, but definitely worth a listen to if you've got a little bit of time. From what I remember, the tracks are all quite short. You won't need much time to listen to it. But if you like Slipknot and you haven't heard their first album, just listen to the whole thing through and just see if you can notice, like how it's refined over the years, how their sound has changed, because this is a chaotic album. Pure chaos. Oh! It's another Slayer album. It's God Hates Us All. <laughs> uh, this one I remember buying. This, this Slayer album has a couple of tracks that I remember. Disciple and Warzone. Warzone especially. I th was it Warzone? One of them has a ridiculous double uh, bass drum kick section, which goes on and on. Uh, it might be Warzone? I can't, I can't remember. It's been so long since I listened to this album. But yeah, one of those two is a... Um, obviously, it's Slayer, it's Thrash Bell, and it's very anti-religion. <laughs> it, is, it is Slayer. Um, oh my gosh, what's going on here? It's meant to be styled like a Bible, but it's instead Slayer lyrics. Sure, why not? Why not? Um, yeah, I, it's Slayer. I've sort of said this fairly recently. I kind of, I like Slayer, but not as much as the other big four. This album has a, has, like I said, Disciple. Uh, Warzone, and there's one more on here that, uh, what's it called? Exile? I think it's Exile, um, that I would say to listen to. Um, oh, produced by Rick Rubin. Let him go. But yeah, maybe it's, so it's fresh metal, but this was from 2001. Oh, it's earlier than I thought. I thought this came out a bit later. Yeah, give, give a couple of tracks a listen. See what you think. It's, you know... Slayer for me, outside of Rain and Blood and um, Seasons in the Abyss and South of Heaven, the more modern stuff, nah, hasn't really vibed with me too much. Yo, wait, what? <laughs> what? Why do I have a Jamelia album? Why do I have... Okay, well, I, ha I apparently have a Jamelia album. Wait, did my brother buy me this for Christmas one year as a joke? I think he might have. I know at one point we were doing, like, joke presents. 
I just can't think of when else. <sighs> so, more technical issues, but yeah, I have no idea when I got this arm. I don't know a single Jamelia song. What is that? And where it came from? Who knows? Right, luckily, I've got another arm that I don't know a huge amount about from a band called Will Haven, called Carp DM. I'm not really sure what's going on in these the album cover, but uh, sh sure. Um, oh, and it continues. Okay. What's on the inside here? Nothing. Right. Some lyric books, but I don't know. I don't know the band. I don't know the band anywhere near well enough to comment. Again, it's just another one of those CDs that I've picked up at some point and not listened to. What a weird little video this is. Two albums that I have no idea about, but I've got them, and I'm good. like I said, I'm recording about all of them, even if I don't know about them. So I've got a record for everything that I've picked up over the years. This is definitely more for myself than anyone watching, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. Where are we going? There we go, hello. Alright dog! Ah, nice. Ingwie Malmsteen, Rising Force. Absolutely virtuoso guitar player. Loves his, like, neoclassical style. Very, like, lots of arpeggios. Very classical music influenced. Um, and a little bit of vocals as well. Uh, off of this, I would say give Black Star a listen. Black Star and... Icarus Dream Suit. It's, like, eight and a half minutes long but well worth a listen to. Um, and Evil Eye as well? Yeah, Evil Eye. But, I mean, th give this whole album a listen. He's got a very, quite a unique style of guitar playing. Um, very scalloped frets, and a really, quite a unique tone, actually. Now, i you can definitely recognise when it's him playing. And, yeah, man just goes, man plays so fast. And I don't really know what else to say about it because he is literally just a virtuoso guitarist that really fits that neoclassical style and uh, it's good. Like, I would say just give a track a listen so you can kind of appreciate what he's able to do. I'd never be able to play anywhere near as fast as him. Man's mental. Mental.